Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talk, so I've got a news roundup for you. Don't do this very much anymore because, well, nothing is real in these newspaper headlines. You don't want to be looking at this crap too often, but once in a while, it amuses me to, well, you know, marvel at the illusion that these fake stream entities and organizations are serving up to the poor, bewildered and lost public. So let's start with this one. This is my favorite from today, maybe because it's a headline that is more likely to be true than all of the other rubbish. Boris may be toast. Yes, it seems that Boris may not actually be an overweight, pudgy, posh, puppet tyrant, but instead he may be a slice of toast. All this time he's been disguised as a human, but it turns out he's just a slice of bread that has been browned by some radiant heat. He gave you a clue recently with this video when he was fraternizing with his own kind. And that headline interpretation is the nearest you're going to get to any kind of reality in these headlines today and any day. It's La La Land. <laughs> Look at the top of this front page. I mean, look at it. The Queen's Jubilee propaganda. Look at the state of it. In my eyes, yeah, this, this could be a poster for a new horror movie. Lovely jubbly jubilee. <laughs> you will be my subject at all costs. Look at all these ones with their insane smiles. I mean, it's the, it's the stuff of nightmares. I mean, if you missed it, I did a video a couple of days ago called Jubilee Scandal, where I gave my opinion on this madness. Check it out if you haven't seen it. But yeah, this is a, a mad montage of mind control royal propaganda that looks to me a little like a horror movie poster. Here we have the Queen, like Dracula, the star of this horror movie, there in the center. We have a, a beef eater, yeah, on the right, a beef eater, technically termed a yeoman warder, one of, one of Dracula's guards in his blood red outfit and real, a real bearskin hat, torn from the carcass of a slaughtered wild Canadian black bear, I believe. One of these beef eaters is also given the title of Raven Master, appointed by the Queen to feed ravens biscuits soaked in blood. So they never leave the Tower of London. Because apparently if, if all the ravens leave, then the Tower of London will fall. Yeah, it's a, it's a horror story. Next to the beef eater, we've got that UK guy uh, from the Eurovision Song Contest recently, smiling like a loon in a pink hat. He, also, he had a peekaboo tattoo on his neck, by the way. You could see it in a few interviews around the time. I noticed that. And, and down below, here we have uh, the Sound of Music Woman. What's her name? Um, uh, Julie Andrews. Another, another inane smile. And it looks like it's hard work for her. Again, she's smiling through a face that's had a lot of work done to it, a lot of surgery. Keep that up and you won't be able to smile at all. And then over here on the left, We've got one of her henchmen blowing a ceremonial trumpet. Let the mind control propaganda begin. A long, <laughs> a long line of sycophantic presenters already in waiting to subject <laughs> and torture you with their nauseating bootlicking drivel. We've got Diana Ross there in blood red outfit, ready to perform at the ritual. And uh, Brian May. <sighs> oh dear. Yeah, it's a proper, it's a proper horror show, all right. That's it, it's the stuff of nightmares. That's how it looks to me. That's what I'm thinking in my head when I see stuff like this. Then again, as time goes on, I'm becoming more and more detached from what society see as normal because, well, I think it's a good thing. If you think this is normal, I don't know what to say to you. So here we have the Daily Star, airport shambles, unexpected pilot in the baggage area. Now we've seen Recently, we've seen an avalanche of stories about airport queues from numerous countries all of a sudden. And this apparently was filmed by a passenger on a plane yesterday of a supposed pilot who got off the plane and then helped put the luggage on the plane because apparently the airports are supposedly understaffed. The way this has come out, the way it's filmed with the guy saying, you know, from the, from the airplane and he's saying, oh, look, he's a legend. The way it's appeared 
all at the same time across the fake stream media. It looks a bit staged to me. I mean, you know these airports didn't have these problems a few weeks back. What did they do? Get understaffed all of a sudden? Like I said before, this to me seems all manufactured. There are two reasons why they want to put people off traveling, but it could also be to coerce the public in the future into getting digital passports and IDs at some point. As they will say, look, if, if you want to avoid these cues that we are creating ourselves, then if you get a digital passport, an ID on your phones, it will speed it up and the check-in process, etc. will be much faster, yeah? That's what I think this could all be about. And when you look at how the Daily Star speaks to its audience in this article, I mean, look at the words it uses. They really think their audience are morons. Look at this, it says, Airport Wallies blame government wazooks and government wazooks blame airport wallies for all the holiday chaos. But this pilot actually did something useful, etc, etc. Airport wallies blame government wazooks? The people at the Daily Star are probably not morons, but they obviously believe their audience is morons with wording like that. And maybe they are, I mean, to be fair. So yeah, you look through all of these front pages and it's all royal propaganda. I mean, really, if you haven't figured out that all of these fake stream media, all of them are owned by the establishment, then it's time to come to that realization, okay? You're a little bit late to the game. They are all connected. It's just one huge network, okay? And any negative press against the royal family is usually done in a controlled opposition way just like controlled opposition work. I mean, look around you on YouTube. Look at the alternative commentators. How many do you see that openly criticize the Queen or are negatively reporting on the Jubilee and the incredible waste of money? Yeah, there's not many, is there? It's a huge network. They can only go so far with any criticism of the Queen and the Royal Family because the Queen, for, ex for example, in this Platinum Jubilee, is off limits. And you can see how powerful the fake stream media and the, uh, the establishment controlling it, how powerful they are by the fact that the whole pantomime of the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard show, which finally finished yesterday, how that has been pushed out from the headlines because the Queen orders it to be so, because they want the headlines for the Platinum Jubilee. Now, I haven't talked about this load of garbage courtroom peekaboo club pantomime show because it's a load of crap. It's been pushed big time on the public. It's all over YouTube like a rash, people talking about it. I mean, what do we have here? We've got two peekaboo club actors who, from the sounds of it, are completely dysfunctional. And I don't know, I mean, this has been yet another experiment on the masses. Is this a new form of entertainment, maybe? Long form entertainment. I mean, if you binge watch seasons of a TV show on Netflix and that's not long enough for you, well, here, how about a daily court case, eight hours a day for six weeks? I mean, that's loads of your time wasted, loads for the masses to consume daily court cases to take up their time and attention. And from the looks of it, to get them to cheer for Johnny Depp. That's the Johnny Depp who is bestie mates with Satanist Marilyn Manson. They both have the same tattoo. Make music videos about Satan. Marilyn Manson also not being a, a stranger to criminal accusations of a similar kind himself. Yeah, let's cheer for, for Johnny. Sounds like such a nice guy from those texts that were read out. Yeah, a pair of peekaboo distractors, and it has certainly distracted a lot of people, kept the masses busy, when maybe they could have been looking into other stuff going on, like the things they have been saying at the recent World Summit, and Davos, and the World Economic Forum, and the talks of a new world order, and cashless societies, and phones being incorporated into the bodies of people. So it's just another form of mindless entertainment. So there you go, there is my roundup of the illusory front pages, the illusion that these control freaks are trying to make reality by projecting that illusion onto the public through this fake stream media. If you're watching this, 
You probably already realized this and you have broken that spell and you now see through this nonsense and you should be immune to it. Immune to the tactics of divide and conquer, immune to the tactics of trying to wind you up so you respond angrily, immune to the tactics of inputting fear into you to coerce you to make decisions against your better judgment. You should now be immune from that. So well done. Stay focused. Concentrate on your family, your close, your close friends, your loved ones. They are the ones that really matter, not these illusory people who exist on these make-believe pedestals. As always, thanks for listening. Come and subscribe to HugoTalks.com and I'll see you later.